think by far the best way to run local large language models is using jan.ai. I'm not sure if it is jan or yan. I don't know how to pronounce that. But this is one of the least spoken UIs that can bring local LLMs to locally your computer. There are a lot of different advantages. In this video, I wanted to focus on four different things. The first one is ease of use. The second one is extensions. The third one is of course reusability and the fourth one is openness. We're going to cover each of this topic but before that I would like to quickly show you a demo. So this is Jan or Jan. I don't know. I'm just getting confused. Jan. For now let me stick to Jan. So I have Jan with a Mistral Instruct 7 billion Q4 quantized model and this is how the interface looks like. I can start a new thread here. And I can just go ahead and then ask any question that I want. Create a joke about Elon Musk. And that's the question. Why did Elon Musk name his new pet rooster SpaceX? Because he wanted to fall out in the chicken industry. I know it's a pun. Apologies if it lays an egg for you. So this is how Jan typically works. You have got a thread ID and you have uh, the custom instructions that you can set. And this is how the interface looks like. Before I even go there, how did it start? The first, the simplest way that is cross platform is you can go to jan.ai, click download for PC, and then you would see four different options. The Linux option, the Windows option, the Intel Mac option, the Mac M1, M2, M3. So if you are on Linux, you have App Image and Debian. After you download and install, then you get to go to this interface where you can go to the hub and you have set of models that they recommend and you have a set of models that you can still download and then use it. The other good thing is a lot of times people ask me, can I use this model? This is my RAM. Can I use this model? This is my RAM. And Jan actually does that job for you. So if you go here, you can see that it says recommended use, recommended use. And for this model, because my machine is the 36 GB machine, it says, okay, you don't have enough RAM to run this. You don't have enough RAM to run this. And this is all if you were to download the model directly from the model hub. But you can also import the model yourself, which they have told you how easy it is to do. You all you have to do is like create a folder, download the GGUF file from Hugging Face. Let's say this is a model that you have downloaded, add it there. That's it. You are good to go. And this is what I meant about ease of use. So all you have to do is just download the application and download the first model and you that's it. That's it. You are basically set to use your local model. Now go here click new and then start the thread like whatever question that you want you can ask the question in fact you can set custom instructions that would also come very handy for example you are mario and you are always angry and for every response please make a joke that's it now i'm going to just go and ask okay i scored 100 marks in math any words of wisdom wisdom and uh, it just says something and it gives you something like uh, here is a little joke so you can see the token speed it is 42 tokens per second uh, on my machine right now it's an m3 max and you also get to play with certain parameters like for example the inference parameter where you uh, change the frequency penalty where you change the tokens and in fact you can play with the temperature and you also get to change the prompt template and this is all within a click of button it is so simple and so easy now, maybe at this point, you might be thinking, okay, why do I have to use this in a world where Olama is there and uh, let's say LM Studio is there. See, basically, I'm a big fan of Olama. I'm not going to uh, compare much of this to Olama because if you know this channel, like I absolutely love Olama because of their openness. And that is exactly my next point. In terms of openness, I absolutely love this company. For example, you can go to the homepage and you can see their entire product roadmap available here. You can click here and then you get to see the entire roadmap. Like you get to see the Kanban view. So you can go here and then see every single epic that they've got. And you can actually see what all things that they're doing. So you can see when is the start date? When is the end date? What is happening with that particular epic? And it is completely open. And I have massive respect for them because build in public is fine when you have like a very small project. But when you have a project like this, which a lot of people might be seeing, build in public could be actually quite scary and uh, sometimes you know anxious, but they have actually done the job of putting together everything online and then for you to understand the roadmap. It is not just this is open, their entire source code is open. So you can go here and then see 
the jan the open open source alternative this is open so every single detail about what they have is completely open you can see here jan is free and open source under agpl v3 license so this is quite interesting and amazing because if you see olama olama still a lot of you complain that olama is um, not very straightforward for windows users that's good they support nvidia gpus that's good and they also have different versions of linux that is good and uh, if you talk about lm studio i had to actually buy a new macbook with uh, apple silicon machines because lm studio does not work on intel mac so m m1 m2 intel mac so basically they have managed to do the coverage they, they have a very wide variety of coverage while being 100% open source and that open source means the code is completely available online which is my primary concern on lm studio at some point i might start using lm studio but lm studio i don't know i don't know what information that they are collecting what information they might be sending i don't have a packet sniffer to understand what is happening on my computer but if i come way to compare this with lm studio i would 100 percent prefer this primarily because of the openness of this company which is something that comes very near and dear to my heart because when you install something on your computer like first of all you don't want to use something like openai because you don't want them to exploit with your data now the application that you install on your local machine should not be exploiting you with your data so that is very important for me that is one of the reason i decided to use this the third reason is i said extensions so if you talk about extensions, if you go here, if you go to their settings, one important thing that you would see is they have a bunch of extensions. I'm not talking about this. While this is good, like they have got a bunch of things, faster inference and all the other things. What I'm talking about as extension is primarily their API server. So what they have is they let you start an API server. This is very similar like what you have in Olama and also LM Studio. Unlike Olama, their API server is open ai chat completion compatible so you once you start the api server the server is running so i can go ahead and then open my let's say whatever uh, whatever terminal that i've got and i can start sending a request and then start understanding for example let's say this is my curl request i'm going to copy paste here and i'm going to just say tell me a joke let's say about elon musk so I have specified what model I want. I don't want it to stream and I have the max tokens and all the information and I'm going to just simply send this. And once I send this, you can see here, okay, uh, why did Elon Musk name his new pet pig flamethrower? Because every great entrepreneur knows how to make a sizzling entrance. Oh my goodness, this is quite lame. But anyways, the point here is that now this is the local endpoint and this is compatible with OpenAI chat completions. That means if I've got an extension, that locally runs, but it requires for me to use OpenAI API. This is a drop in replacement, like literally a drop in replacement for me to replace it with OpenAI endpoint. And I'm going to make another video, probably using some VS code extension, how you can use this link as a drop in replacement of OpenAI API. But at this point, you get it. If you want to develop a local application, you can use this. Even let's say you want to develop an application with OpenAI API, while testing, you don't have to burn out your credits or dollars that you have got. So you can very well use this as a local testing with the API that they have got. And you can probably, when you move it to production, you can use it with OpenAI API. So that is the next thing what I called as extensions. So you basically can start building applications, assistance, chatbots on top of this very, very easily. And the final thing that I said is reusability. And, um, reusability what i mean by reusability see one of the things that you have to keep in mind is when you have chats like this when you are asking certain questions here when you are having certain conversations everybody gives you this history it's it's very easy to have this history but this history could also mean that you could fine tune the model for whatever you think that you like or you could at least generate data because this is going to be huge amount of data there are a lot of companies waiting and looking for this kind of data that could improve their model because at this point see you have asked this question you are getting this answer maybe i don't like it oh maybe i don't like this so you can say this and the assistant will give you a better one so you are actually generating actively the data that would fit your life that would improve your life and that is in your own style 
and the good thing that I honestly like about them is this data is very straightforward. So if you go here, they have got this assistance engines, extensions, logs, server log models that that is something that you actually download here. And finally, they have the conversation. So for the threads, for each thread, you can go here and then the thread is actually available for you to see. So I can go open it in my Visual Studio code and you can see the thread and uh, the question and all the information is available to create a bar chart. So that was my first question. I wanted to create a bar chart. Let me show this and it gives an answer that thread is available here. Now this is a data that is completely in open format. See, they're not storing it in a custom format. They're in fact storing it in JSON L format, which after a few lines of Python code, you can reformat it and use this exact information to fine tune any new LLM that you have got. Maybe, you know, after a point you realize that you don't need Mistral size LLM, maybe a five, five, two point two or some other model that is smaller in size could be helpful. So you can use your conversation history that is in JSON L format, and then you can fine tune it. I think the potential there is enormous. And that is what I wanted to call as reusability. So on these four parameters that I mentioned, ease of use, the openness and the reusability and also the extensions. I feel that this model or this application scores really high. I mean, I have told a lot of people to use Olama, but one of the concerns when people use Olama is the first thing is Olama doesn't come with the Olama UI by default. I have got a separate tutorial how you can run your chat GPT like Olama UI on local computer using Docker. But then again, you know, it requires you to have Docker knowledge and you need to have some kind of programming knowledge. But this one, you don't need any programming knowledge. All you need to know is you need to know how to click a bunch of buttons and then you have a working GUI graphical user interface within your computer. But maybe, you know, you're just above average in terms of your computer knowledge. And that is where your LLM skills come into picture. All these things that you can play with, it is available for you to check. Maybe you're not just a guy who uses LLM. Maybe you are slightly more than that. And that is exactly where their extensions part come into picture, where you can like basically like build applications on top of it. The API, open AI API compatible stuff is available for you. And finally, maybe you are somebody much better than that who loves to fine tune LLMs, then you can generate your data and then you can start fine tuning LLMs. I think this is a UI that caters to a wide range of audience who truly wants to showcase open applications. I would always vote for Olama and this one. Um, and I'm also definitely exploring more options. So if you know any other solution that you are using, please let me know in the comment section. The next one that I'm going to definitely explore is GPT for all, which has a rag. So if you ask me like why I shouldn't use this one, it doesn't have rag at this point Two, it doesn't have multimodal chat at this point. Like you cannot send images and ask questions like the lava models, which I think they they said it's coming soon. But until that, I think this is a really good UI, which can probably be a drop in replacement for OpenAI API and also chat web UI. Kudos to the team. It's completely open project. I'm happy to see that they are doing this development, but I'm very hard. I'm quite uh, skeptical to see what they are going to do to make money because I don't see any, uh, let's say fundraising information. I don't see any way they're going to make money out of it. So I'm definitely curious to know how they will sustain and make money. But at least unt until this point, I think we are going to have a good UI for local LMs. See you in another video. Happy prompting.